cheer. Now, George, in this example, as I mentioned, this is a little bit more difficult, a lot more difficult than the ones we've looked at so far, right? Now we're dealing with some expressions that are in our denominator. However, ladies and gentlemen, the process is going to be exactly the same. And if you guys remember the process, Danielle, what it basically goes, comes down to is we identify, we look at our denominators, and we identify what is going to be the least common denominator. So we see here, my least common denominator, I have two different denominators, so actually three. This you can basically rewrite as one. But I have x plus 4 and x minus 4. So therefore, to identify my least common denominator is going to be So we'll, uh, we'll go back to what we learned last class period, hence the reason why I'm going to be going back and reviewing some of the problems you guys did last class period. If you guys remember, when we're identifying the least common denominator of expressions, it's basically going to be your product of your two separate denominators. And we've talked about this with adding and subtracting. Um, so therefore, in this case, my LCD is just going to be x minus 1 times x plus 4. It's fairly basic to be able to take the product and multiply them to get your um, LCD, which I actually think it's easier when you have polynomials than when you have numbers. Because ladies and gentlemen, when I'm asking for like the LCD of like numbers, if I say what's the LCD of like 2 and 9, you have to think, what is the smallest number that 2 and 9 both divide into? Well, that ends up being 18, right? But with polynomials, it's always just going to be their product. It's always you know, just going to be you're basically multiplying them, and that's going to be your LCD. So again, to eliminate our fraction, we're going to multiply by our LCD. Okay. Now, what you guys see is by multiplying my LCD on both sides, again, I'm producing an equivalent equation. However, now, my x plus 4 is divided to 1. Oops, we had a multiplier here. You got to make sure you multiply by every single term. My apologies. Please be very, very diligent with that. When you're multiplying your LCD, you got to multiply by every term. Remember, terms are separated by addition and subtraction. So I got to multiply by every single term. And then over here, my x minus 1's divide out. So now, my equation is going to be 6x times x minus 1 plus 4 times x minus 1 times x plus 4 is equal to 2x plus 2 times x plus 4. Easier than what? So I don't like this better than I like numbers. No, I said identifying, what I said was identifying the LCD was easier with polynomials because it's always just going to be the product. That's what I was stating. Okay? Obviously, this is a lot more work than some of the other problems we did. So, but basically, guys, once you multiply, I mean, really, the LCD is not difficult to find. You just take the product of your denominators. Then you multiply everything by your LCD, divide out your common terms, and now basically all we're doing is applying, now basically all we're doing is applying the distributive property. You have 6x, um, 6, 6x times x minus 1 is going to be 6x squared minus uh, 6x. Over here, I can apply distributive property, but I would like to multiply these out. Um, if you guys don't think, uh, Joka, if you need to move, you can. I'm more than happy to go and do that. But if I'm going over here, I'd like you to be um, writing this stuff down rather than what you're doing. So over here, you're going to be multiplying this. x times x is x squared. Negative x, 4x, negative 4. Combine like terms. You have x squared um, plus 3x minus 4. Then, if I distribute that, so that's basically 4 times x, I'll do distribute it next, next time, equals here, I've got to multiply these now. Um, actually, I'll do this in my, I'll just do this by doing FOIL. So here I have 2x squared plus 2x plus 8x plus 8. Okay, So 1, I did the box method. Over here, I just did FOIL. Um, by combining, let's go ahead and distribute here. So I have 6x squared minus 6x plus 4x squared plus 12x minus 16 equals, here I can combine these, 2x squared plus 10x plus 8. It's just multiplying and adding and subtracting. 
So now what we can simply do, now what we can simply do is again combine our like terms. 6x plus 4x squared is going to give us, here I have 10x squared. This becomes a negative 2x minus 16 equals 2x squared plus 10x plus 8. Now the important thing, ladies and gentlemen, is to get everything to the same side. Wait, what? Wait, what, what? I combine the terms. Oh, it is Nick 6x. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. It can get kind of confusing with dealing with all the numbers here. So now I'm just going to get everything to the same side. So therefore, I have 8x squared uh, minus 4x minus 24 equals 0. All right. And then what I would recommend doing, ladies and gentlemen, is on this example, um, I know exactly I should have. I guess I could have gone one more intermediate one before giving you guys the difficult one. Um, basically, what I would do is now we have to factor this. So if I was going to factor this, 8x squared minus 4x minus 24. First thing I would do is factor out a 4. So I'm left with 2x squared uh, minus x minus 6 equals 0. And basically, ladies and gentlemen, if you go ahead and factor this, let's try to see if I can simplify this. This would be um, 2x. Let's see if I can do this one on my own. Oh, 2x. Thank you. OK. So when now you go ahead and take this factored form, I basically just did the factoring in my head. I know that 2x times x gives me 2x squared. 3 times negative 3 is negative 6. And then what I calculated in my head was 3 times x plus 2x times negative 2 gives me negative x. So therefore, I have 4 times 2x plus 3 times x minus 2 equals 0. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have the 0 product property. All right. Now, first of all, you guys can know that you can divide by 4 on both sides. 4 is really not going to affect our answer. All right. So basically, we have 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. And x minus 2 is equal to 0. So therefore, our final answer is x equals negative 3 halves and x equals 2. OK? Now, before we go and check our answers, the main important thing that I want you guys to understand is if you guys remember when we were simplifying, when we were adding, when we were multiplying, when we were subtracting, dividing, we always had our constraints. And if you guys look at this original problem, what were the two answers x cannot equal? x cannot equal negative 4 and 1. Do you guys see our solutions are not uh, negative 4 or 1? So therefore, you can always go back and check your answer. But in this case, our solutions are going to work. I will go over an example where our solutions will not work. And I do know, ladies and gentlemen,